This episode of Film Ride is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Ride, we're testing out the Atomos Ninja Blade. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques. Going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and a while ago I scooped up the new Ninja Blade recorder. We've been using it for a while now to get more comfortable with it. I even used it as a backup recorder when we shot Adobe and the Frog. The great thing about this recorder is it's also a monitor, and for the quality you get, it's pretty low cost. So today, we're going to take a closer look at this bad boy, but before we do, as always, Atomos is not sponsoring this episode. I am not getting paid to do this review, and this is 100% my true opinion. Okay? Okay. Bump. The Ninja Blade comes in a solid carrying case, which inside you're gonna find the blade, a charger, some batteries, which clip right onto the back of the monitor. They also have different battery mounts depending on which you use. Caddies for SSD or regular old hard drives, which is nice because this is gonna keep you lower in the budget area if you don't have the cash for the SSDs. I'll mount this guy to my camera using a magic arm or mini ball head, then connect it to my camera through HDMI, which is this recorder's only connection type that it has built in. You can get a converter to use SDI, which is great if you need it, but most of us really aren't gonna need it for the most part. Now, with it all set up, we fire it up to get to the main screen. I have this hooked to my C100 already, which is powered on. And now we see the main reason that I'm loving this piece of gear. It is a monitor recorder, which is really the only kind that I like to use all that much. Getting both in one package really keeps the cost down and the amount of gear that you need to lug around. And it is a very solid monitor. Using it with my C100 has been incredibly helpful since I found that I'm seeing a much truer final image on the Ninja Blade than I am from my C100's LCD. And the screen is 1280 by 720, nice and bright, calibrated to Rec 709, and it's touchscreen. But right on top here, you see the frames per second that we're shooting at, which you can change by tapping right on it. Next to that, we see what we're recording to, which is ProRes. You can also record a DNX HD. Next to that is our flavor of ProRes, which you can do LT, HQ, or 422. And this would be 10-bit 422. Of course, my C100 only outputs 8-bit, so I'm stuck with that. Next, you have your media and your battery life. On the bottom here, you have audio metering. You can record audio direct through HDMI and monitor thanks to a headphone jack. You can also take an analog in if you want to as well. Now, if we hit menu, we find more goodies. In scene and shot, you can set your naming conventions, some more customizable things in display option like audio metering layout. And if you hit adjust screen, you have some calibration options, including Rec 709 and C log. If we back out of there, inside time code is where we're gonna set all our time code needs and trigger from the camera if we we wanted, which just means the device will start recording once you hit record on the camera itself. But that's all I wanted to show you in the menu. Now to the stuff I dig the most, these buttons here on the side, starting with the top, we tap it and out come the waveform tools. Up top, we have the Luma Parade. This is gonna help you set exposure for your scene. Next is RGB Parade, then Vector Scope, a zoomed in view for the Vector Scope. Then if we twirl that close and open the next, here's where you're gonna find peaking, zebra, false color, and blue channel. This is used to monitor the noise in your image since the blue channel is where most of all of that ucky-duckiness will live. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Did I say ucky-ducky? Yes, you did. Just checking. And the final of these three is the flag function. Here you can quickly favorite or reject shots for later use when editing. And lastly, on the other side of the monitor, we have safe area guide. But this is the only guide here, unfortunately, which is my only real complaint. I really wish that we had a guide for 235 bars. I use that constantly and would love to have it built in. Hopefully, that can happen in a future update. But that is the main overview of the functionality of the recorder. I really love how simple everything is laid out and how intuitive this piece of gear is to use. Within about 10 minutes, I was off and running with the Ninja Blade, so there's almost no learning curve at all. But now, a quick break, and then we compare footage direct out of the C100 with that recorded to the Ninja Blade. What? See you 
Thinkdomain.com. Logo. Testing the ProRes of the Ninja Blade up against the HVCHD compression of the C100 really surprised me at first because if you shoot in perfect conditions, making sure the C100 is set at the native ISO of 850 and with the right lighting, especially outside during the day, up front you really can't see too much of a difference between the two images. The compression inside the C100 does an incredibly good job keeping up. But there is a difference here. Take this shot. If we compare the Ninja ProRes to the C100 AVCHD, you can see there is a slight difference at first. The lines are a bit tighter with the ProRes. There is less compression in the dark areas, although I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on YouTube because of how slight it is. But if we look at the blue channel of these images, since the blue channel is where most of your noise and nasty compression artifacts are going to live, you see that there is a big difference between these two. We're getting much tighter noise in ProRes from the Ninja than we are with the C100 footage. And if we add color grade to this, it gets even more noticeable. Then I found that once I left the native ISO, went a little higher around 1600 or 2000 and didn't have the most optimal lighting situation, the difference between the two shots became pretty huge. Take this shot. If we zoom in on the Xenomorph here, which I chose because all of these fine lines that are on the figure's body. Right now we are looking at the Ninja ProRes footage, but when I switch over to the C100's in-camera footage, you see that these lines get lost entirely into this mush. In some areas, you can hardly tell that they were even there at all. And when we switch over to the blue channel here, we have a very grainy image from the Ninja due to that high ISO, but when we switch to the AVC HD inside the camera, we're getting a much more smudged compression, losing detail and giving very little room for grading and the like, which is what I mean when I say that the image falls apart. As we start to color grade this image, you see that those issues become worse and worse, and if we push it too far, it's just a mess. Even if we throw in denoiser, it doesn't look much better because of the lack of detail we have. But if we jump over to the ProRes out of the Ninja and push that with the color grade, it gets noisy, but we still have all the detail there. The image isn't falling apart. So now I can throw in denoiser and clean that up nicely. When we compare those two versions denoise, you can see how much of a difference having ProRes makes. And when we switch to the blue channel, you can see it even more clearly. But again, when you shoot with perfect conditions, the ABC HD compression holds up impressively well, but once you move away from that at all, it really starts to fall apart, especially with DSLR cameras, which is where I think this recorder really shines. Since it has analog audio in, you could sync your sound while shooting with a DSLR. Take your audio from an external recorder direct into the Ninja and video from your DSLR, of course. It's a very solid solution. But that is it, my overview and thoughts on the Ninja Blade recorder, which runs for about $995, which is high for some, but given the fact that this is both a solid monitor and recorder, I'm super impressed with this thing's functionality and price. If I'm not needing raw or 4k this is definitely my go-to recorder that is it for today if you have any questions on any of this feel free to shoot it to me on twitter and i'll see you guys next week when i become a blue creature ponytails are used in an oddly creepy way <laughs>